Friends, grace, peace, and mercy be unto you from God our Father and his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wherever we are on the journey of life, whatever stage we are at, whether you're graduating college or high school or middle school, if you're moving up from elementary, if you're moving from preschool to elementary school or from being at home into preschool, whether you are on your first job or your fifth job, whether you are almost retired, whether you've been retired so long you don't remember what working was like, if you're somewhere along that stage, along that, that journey of life, two questions really never completely go away. They never completely go away. What am I going to be? What am I going to do? Now, at different stages of life, we may have different categories of answers, but those questions really are still with us, even if we're way at the end of that journey. What am I going to be now? What am I going to do now? I remember wrestling with such questions myself, and at different stages of my life, different answers bubbled to the surface. When I was a real little kid, I would answer, you know, people ask, well, what are you going to be? I said, I'm a farmer. You know, when I was a real little kid, I thought farmers were cool. We raised stuff, right? And then I wanted to be a spaceman because we were, we were landing on the moon when I was a wee little kid. And I wanted to be an undersea explorer like Jacques Cousteau. I wanted to be a biochemist and cure cancer. I, I wanted to be a college professor. I wanted to be a husband and a father. I wanted to be a high school English teacher. I wanted to be a writer and a pastor. At different stages of my life, I would answer those questions differently, but the questions were always there. What do I want to be? What do I want to do? We hear the prophet Jeremiah. And I think we need to allow the words of Jeremiah to enter into our thinking of these questions this morning. And you may recall, this is what it says in Jeremiah 29, 11. For surely you know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm to give you a future with hope. For surely you know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare and not for harm. To give you a future with hope. We hear these words. And they come to us simultaneously. As great joy and great concern. They come to us as great joy because these words are full of promise, aren't they? God has a plan for our welfare, for our future. And it's a future that's marked by God's hope. God has plans for us, plans for our well-being. And that's a reason for joy. But these words also bring great concern if we're honest about it. They are of great concern because we can fall into a subtle trap as we hear them. We can fall into a trap believing that these plans come to us as some great mystery that God invites us to unravel, that God knows something and it's our job in life to figure it out, these mysterious plans of God for us. It's a trap. It makes us fearful of making a decision because what if we choose the wrong thing? Because if we believe that these plans are a great mystery that we have to unravel, that God knows something about our future that we don't know, then we spend our life trying to figure out 
is this the job that really God wants me to have, or did I make a mistake? We can be miserable, we can be unfulfilled if we buy into this idea can practically paralyze us into making any choices in life whatsoever. Is this what God really wants? It can turn our life into one long quest to figure out that one special thing that God has planned and forgot to tell us. But see, as Lutherans, We don't have to buy into this. Thinking as Lutherans, we don't have to fall into this trap because, you know, we Lutherans, we we believe that life is not faithfully lived by spending time trying to figure out God's plan. We believe that we can and should serve God in whatever we are being, in whatever we are doing, we believe that we can serve and love God in fullness in whatever we are being, in whatever we are doing right now. As one Lutheran theologian puts it, God is already at work in one's life. Any place and every place that we find ourselves, our task is to discern God's will and try to act responsibly right now. Life isn't about trying to figure out the one perfect job or vocation that God has for us something out there over the rainbow, but rather discerning God's will right here and now, each and every moment, for what we are and what we are doing. This doesn't mean that we should never change jobs. New opportunities arise. New gifts are discovered or discerned. New possibilities are born. It doesn't mean that we're not supposed to to seek to use these gifts and take advantage of these opportunities. It doesn't mean that. But what it means is that whatever we're doing, whoever we are, whatever vocation we have, we are invited to figure out right now what God wants us to be about, to discern what God is calling us right now to do. We don't have to get trapped in language of God's personal plan for our life. We've mentioned the word discernment, and we need to talk about that. Because discernment isn't just another word for deciding. You wonder what Lutherans are about. We teach that God has already decided. God has chosen life for the world. God has chosen us and our unique gifts. God has chosen us and our unique abilities. And God has given us the freedom to match them up with the needs that we see around us. Discernment isn't about what job we're going to do someday. It's not about what we're going to do with our life. It's not deciding even about what school we're going to attend or what job we're going to have Discernment is about being open. It's about being curious. It's about being attuned to what God is up to with us and the community. 
It's about being confident. This is important. Discernment is about being confident that we have a part to play in the story of God's love for the world. It's about being certain. It's about being confident that we have a part to play in the story of God's love for the world. Discernment is about considering what God has given to you. What are you good at? What are you passionate about? What brings you joy? What experiences, what circumstances, what challenges have formed and prepared you for the new thing that God may be doing with you right now? Discernment is also about noticing what God is doing in the world. What are the needs of your community? What, where's the gospel? Where's the new good news of Jesus being lived out and proclaimed in your world? What part have you been given to play in the story? of God's love for the world. Discernment isn't about a decision. It's about always being ready to ask these questions that we've been talking about and then having asked the questions of God, being willing to live the answers having asked the questions of God. It's being willing to live the answers. Jeremiah speaks these words that we hear this morning to a people whose world has been turned upside down. Six centuries before the birth of Jesus The Babylonians have marched down from the north and crushed the Jewish people, destroyed their temple, pulled down the walls around Jerusalem, destroyed their army, sent their leaders and their artisans into exile hundreds and hundreds of miles away. And God now speaks through Jeremiah a vision of a promised future full of hope and blessing. Friends, we believe that the plans of which Jeremiah speaks have come into their fullness in Jesus. It's not about God's special plan for our lives that we have to struggle to figure out because if we don't get it right, we will suffer If we don't get it right, we'll be lost and unfulfilled. It's not about that. It's about what God has accomplished in and through Jesus for our sake and for the sake of the world. That we have been freed through Christ to live for God and for the world. Freedom born of hope, hope born of Jesus. What am I going to be? What am I going to do? We ask these of ourselves, every stage of our life. What am I going to be now? What am I going to do now? And our freedom in Christ enables us to work out the answers by living them faithfully and with great joy. Amen.